everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brittany of BrittanyJJones.com. If you are new, welcome to the channel. I am so happy to have you. I hope that you will like what you see and subscribe below for more. In today's video, we are going to be continuing on with um, National Sturger Month, and I'm gonna be showing you how to thread my Husqvarna Viking Husky Lock S25. If you missed my previous video for my serger where I did the overview of it, shows you all some of its features and my favorite stitch that I use all the time, <laughs> you can check that video out here. Next week, I will be uploading a video on how to convert the serger over to a cover stitch machine. That's right, it is a two-in-one. You get a serger and you get a cover stitch machine with the Husky Luck S25. So now let's go ahead and jump into this video and I'll show you how to thread the machine. All right, everyone, so again, my machine is the Husqvarna Viking Husky Lock S25, and I am picking up right where I left off from my previous video, where I did an overview of the serger. I talked about all the functions on the outside, as well as the stitches that it has, how you can save, load, and also delete a stitch. So we went over all of that already. If you missed it, be sure to check that video out. So today, we're gonna get down and dirty on the inside down here, um, and we're gonna thread the machine and get it ready for serging. This is the perfect time for me because I'm about to start a new project and I need this um, tan color thread. So I'm gonna be threading my serger with this color today. I know this machine can come across as looking very intimidating and um, just very scary, <laughs> but I promise you it is not. Husqvarna Viking did an amazing job with color coordinating everything down here um, and giving clear instructions. They have the colors also all over here and it just makes it super easy um, to thread the machine. Like they, they just didn't stop with the colors up here or over here on the little sticker. They brought it over here as well to these moving parts so like I said, it makes things so much easier to thread it. So I just want to give you a close up to see exactly what I meant by how they carried the colors over here to the moving parts. The green is for the upper looper, the blue is for the lower looper, and the purple here is for the chain stitch cover stitch. So now let's go ahead and thread it. I'm gonna be using the four thread overlock, so I'm gonna use four spools of thread and we're gonna start with the upper looper. To begin, I'm gonna go ahead and raise up the thread stand as high as it can go. Once it clicks in place, then we're good to go. Now I'm gonna take my spools of thread and place them on the spool pins back here in the back of the machine. So to begin, we're gonna start working with the green, which is the upper looper. And I'm gonna take the thread all the way up to the top. And I just hooked it through the thread guide. Now I'm gonna pull it a little bit and I'm gonna thread it through this upper thread guide that's at the top of the machine. Now I'm gonna take it down. One thing that is important to make sure that when you're threading the machine that you have your presser foot up. If you have your presser foot down, it closes the disc that your thread needs to slide between. So when you need to adjust tension or something, um, if you don't have the thread in there, if the disc is closed and the thread wasn't in there when it closed, then the thread will not have that tension. If you're trying to adjust it, it won't adjust. And more than likely, if it's not, in this thread disc, then you're gonna get a messed up serger stitch. So always make sure that you have your presser foot raised on your machine when you are threading it so that the thread will go through the tension disc. So I'm going to slide it through the tension disc here. I also like to hold it a little bit at the top just to make sure I'm getting it through there. Okay, so now that I have it through, I'm gonna go ahead and pull my other spools through. And next, I'm just gonna grab the lower looper. I'm gonna do that the same exact way. Take it through the thread guide that's up here at the top, then take it through the thread guide at the top of the machine. Take it around that little disc there. Hold it just a little bit so that it goes between the tension disc, and I'm just gonna let it sit there. And then I'm gonna do my right needle the same exact way, taking it through the top thread guide on the thread stand, the, t the thread got on the top of the machine around that disc and I'm not wrapping it around the disc I'm just taking it around it and through the tension disc here and then lastly the left needle up through the top here through the top thread guide just right beside this disc at the top and I'm just gonna hold it a little bit so I make sure I'm getting it right into that um, tension disc and I'm just gonna let that hang. So now um, let's go ahead and start threading down here at the bottom of the machine. 
When I get down here to start threading through all these little moving parts and small little circles here that we have to get thread through, I always grab my little case that came with the machine. And this just has some little tools in here, little screwdriver, some oil. This right here is a great tool for um, when you're switching out your needle, you can put the needle in this little hole. So when you take it out, the needle won't accidentally slide um, between the machine. So it just has some really nice tools needles as well down in here um, and it also has the tweezers so this is what i use um, to thread down here in the machine so to begin threading first i'm going to grab my upper looper which was the green and i'm just going to put it right here first to this little hook and it just goes right around there and then the next step is to come over to this green here so i'm just going to take this thread and i'm going to go right over here and hook that in place like that so now that I have it through this one here, I'm gonna move it to the second green dot right here. So I have my tweezers and forgive me if I get too handsy, I'm trying to um, show you all as well as thread it. So I'm gonna take it through this first one here. I have it through there and I'm gonna pull it up. So now I've went from this first dot to the second dot. Now I'm gonna to go to this green dot. and I'm gonna just pull that through. I'm gonna make sure it's trying to go up in that blue one. I don't want that. So now I just have it from green to green. The next step is to come right up here in this little circle right here that's by the upper looper. So I'm just gonna pull that up through there. Pull some more thread. So we've gone from the first green dot, the second green dot, the third green dot, and now I'm up here in this little circle by the upper looper, and now I'm just gonna thread it right here through the upper looper. I'm gonna move my hand wheel a little bit. I'm gonna pull my thread and pull it back. So now I just threaded the upper looper and I just followed all of those green dots. So now let's go ahead and thread the lower looper. So here's my lower looper thread, and I'm just gonna hook this right around here, same exact way as I did the upper looper. And now we're gonna go to the first blue dot. It may be hard for you all to see, but the first blue dot is actually right here on top of this, and then there's also a purple one in front of it. But I'm gonna take the lower looper thread back here through the blue. So I have my thread here. So I have that in. So now let's go to the next blue, which is right down here up under the green. So I'm gonna grab my tweezers, grab the thread, just gonna put it through here, grab it. That was the second step. So for the third step, I'm gonna take it right through this same one that we took the upper looper. Okay, so that's the third. And now the fourth one. So I have my tweezers and thread here and I'm gonna take it through the last blue dot. Okay, so I just pulled a thread through the last blue dot over here. So to get the thread up here to its final spot, you see this little lever here. In that lever is a little groove just for the thread to sit. And when I lift it, it will go under here and it will catch and hook. Now, in order for me to get it back here, I also need to move this stitch finger lever down to the rolled hem. So now it's on R. It was on N. That's, that's where I usually keep it when I'm doing my serging. However, when I'm doing cover stitching, I do need to move it to the row hem uh, or R, which is it's an R up here. So that's what I need to move it down to so I can finish threading my lower looper. So from here, I'm going to just let the thread fall into that groove. You can see I have it, it's fallen into the groove. I'm just gonna lift the lever and now it's hooked. I can take this piece of thread now and I can go ahead and thread it up here thread into lower looper. I want to make sure also that I did not hook it around the chain stitch. So good. And I'm going to go ahead and push this rolled hem back because there have been times where I forgot and my stitch came out crazy. <laughs> so now I have my lower looper threaded. You can see the thread is moving here. And I also have the upper looper threaded. 
So those are good to go. Now we can move on to the needles. Now for threading the right needle, and here's my thread right here. First, I'm going to bring it over here toward the left, and you can see that the machine has little slots right here for the thread. They have it all the way for the needle. So it's three up here, three right here, and then there's also three under here for the thread to go through. So I'm gonna put the right needle in the furthest one toward the back. So that one's gonna go back here. I'm gonna take it around and hook it here. And then it's gonna come in this first one. And then under here is gonna go in this first one as well. And just slide that over. And now I can just go ahead and thread the needle. So now that I have the right needle threaded through this guide up here, I'm gonna put it behind this slot. And now I can go ahead and thread my right needle. I'm going to take it, thread it through here. and pull it through. Now let's do the left needle. I'm gonna thread it the same exact way except for the left needle, I'm gonna put it through all of the second slots that are up here. So bringing it all the way down and toward the left, I'm gonna put it down here in the second slot, around here at the top, second slot through this one, as well as under here. Now I'm going to put it behind this thread guide and go ahead and thread the needle. Now the serger is all threaded and ready for sewing. So now let's give it a test to see how I did. I'm going to go ahead and close the cover. I have a little swatch of fabric here from the project that I'm working on. I'm gonna go ahead and slide it under here. Put my presser foot down. I have my stitch already on stitch three, which is the four thread over locker. So now I can go ahead and start sewing. And there you have it. Let me zoom in so you can see a little bit better. And here's the back. I'll go ahead and do it one more time. All right, y'all, so that is all for the video. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do hope that you all enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please leave them for me down below. I'll be more than happy to answer. Make sure that you come back for the third video in this series where I show you all how to convert this over from a serger to a cover stitch machine. So I will see you all then. Blessings, everyone. Bye.